The Biden administration is under pressure from members of its own ranks to support a ceasefire in Gaza. Nearly 400 staffers in the Biden administration got together to demand the president pursue a ceasefire in this conflict that has killed thousands of civilians so far. Uh, the letter released on Tuesday begins with this. We represent a coalition of Biden-Harris administration political appointees and civil servants positioned across the domestic and foreign policy spheres, working in federal agencies, departments, independent agencies, and the White House. We call on President Biden to urgently demand a ceasefire and call for de-escalation of the current conflict by securing the immediate release of the Israeli hostages and arbitrarily detained Palestinians, the restoration of water, fuel, electricity, and other basic services, and the passage of adequate humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. The letter says the signatories represent various backgrounds and faiths and work in more than 30 departments and agencies. Uh, two of those uh, are administration staff members who led outreach efforts for the letter. They told news, uh, NBC News that since the letter was first circulated about two weeks ago, it's gained signatures of senior and low-level administration employees working across the federal government and in multiple countries. They include staff from Departments of Commerce, Defense, Interior, Homeland Security, and the Executive Office of the President, among other agencies. Two of these staff members, the, the two staff members, who are political appointees, do want to remain anonymous because they're worried about retaliation um, for speaking out against the administration's position, uh, which is no ceasefire. They said that those who signed the letter also remain anonymous out of concern for their job security and personal safety, and that is uh, absolutely believable. That tells you something, okay? First of all, uh, the amount of pressure there is in our government to support the government of Israel's bombing campaign against the Palestinians. When you are not allowed to speak out or you cannot, when you fear to speak out because of possible retaliation, that says something. Now these staffers, 400 of them, again, they represent the majority of the American public. In fact, there's a poll here. Um, this was uh, a, an older poll here uh, in October, 66% of Americans uh, agree that you should uh, have a ceasefire. A more recent poll from Reuters and Ipsos actually had that at 68%, saying that they agree with the statement that Israel should call a ceasefire to try to negotiate. About three quarters of Democrats and half of Republicans in the poll supported the idea of a ceasefire. Uh, now, the Biden administration has said unequivocally, no, no, we, we don't support a ceasefire. This is even after more than 11,000 Palestinians have been killed, around 40% of them children, according to health officials in Gaza. Now, that's a pretty big disconnect here between the administration and the people who, and, and the voters, essentially, Democrats, 80, about 80% of Democrats are like, ceasefire, ceasefire, let's go. Uh, now, one of the staff members told NBC News, it's unfortunate that we're at this point, having hundreds of thousands of people come together within this administration and within Congress and say that we are calling for a ceasefire, something that's so basic to just end human suffering. Now, those two are among what they said are many signatories with family and friends in Gaza, the West Bank, and Israel. Quote, our loved ones are in imminent danger, and every single day of waking up and not knowing what's going to happen is absolute hell. When Stafford told NBC News, the dissonance of going to work every day and feeling like you're a part of something that is actively harming people you love was expressed by so many people involved in this. The staffers told NBC that based on what they've experienced personally and heard from colleagues in the White House, and across several government agencies, they believe there is a lack of direction on how staffers are even supposed to talk about this. Some agencies, they said, have had specific meetings about this. In some places, it has been completely taboo to even talk about this, one said. I've already expressed among staffers of all levels that they feel the lack of guidance for how to talk about this, how to manage people suffering because of this. A lot of people feel quite alone and frustrated. They described a disconnect 
between what is coming out at the senior levels of the administration and what their colleagues are feeling. And I absolutely, again, 100% believe that. Yes, huge disconnect. Uh, now, a lot of us, one staffer said, are political appointees to serve at the pleasure of the president. A lot of us came from his campaign. So there's this uneasy feeling of not agreeing with what we're working on. Efforts to rebuild communities before calling a ceasefire are going to fall on deaf ears because until that's being called, nothing will be seen as genuine. There's no way to escape this conversation. So look, uh, humanitarian aid, right? I, Biden uh, says, well, we're going to do humanitarian aid while, while they're still being bombed. You can't have humanitarian aid, really, unless there's, uh, you know, safe passage for this humanitarian aid to reach its intended target. Uh, and you would need a ceasefire to do something like this. These, these oh, uh, we're going to pause for just a little bit, just to, just to you know, do, do this and do that. No, not, that's not going to cut it. Okay, uh, there's more. Uh, one said, every day you're, gonna, you're going into work for this administration, then you're going to look at your phone, you're going to see the suffering that you kind of feel like you're causing. A lot of people are no longer comfortable being silent, no longer comfortable being complacent in a way. Stafford told NBC News that they and some administration colleagues they've spoken to uh, with have considered resigning because of the administration's handling of the war up to this point. Uh, and you've already had resignations. One of them was a veteran State Department official, Josh Paul, who resigned last month, citing what he called the U.S.'s blind support for Israel in its war with Hamas and its continued provision of lethal arms. Well, the U.S. is the world's arms dealer. So not exactly surprising here, uh, but uh, it, is, it is interesting to see that this was the line for Mr. Paul. Now, the staffer uh, said, these are people who really want to serve the public, including people who want to serve the president, but it's going to push people to a breaking point if this continues. There's been a lot of damage done with the, within the public service community, and I'm not sure how we're going to repair that, a second staffer said. The U.S. government has an immense amount of power to change the status quo on the ground, and the refusal to use that, uh, to acknowledge that, feels like a betrayal. Look, all of that, 100%, I feel it, okay? Yes, we do have the power to pressure Israel to, do, uh, to doing a, uh, to, to you know, reach out and do a ceasefire. Yes, we have that power to call on them as their biggest supporter and ally, okay? And we're refusing to do it. Of course, people are going to feel betrayed. Now, both told NBC News that they'd be watching to see whether Biden acknowledges the March for Israel, which actually just happened on Tuesday. Now, that march is... Uh, Pretty surreal to watch, okay? Um, for one, you had uh, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Hakeem Jeffries joining together on stage with MAGA Mike Johnson and Trump's former ambassador to Israel, David Friedman. You know who was also there at the March for Israel? Pastor John Hagee. Yeah. You know, the same John Hagee that claimed that Hitler had came from a lineage of, quote, accursed, genocidally murderous, half-breed Jews, and suggested that it was the Jews' disobedience towards God that led to their persecution, even claiming that uh, Hitler was sent by God to create the state of Israel so, you know, he could eventually bring about the end times. Yeah, so that, that was, uh, who was at the March for Israel, okay? Uh, and then uh, you also had Van Jones, who was there. And uh, while he was trying to say, oh, let's stand against uh, hate, uh, let's stand against anti-Semitism, he was met at the rally with a chance of no ceasefire from the crowd. Listen. Let's take a stand here against anti-Jewish bigotry. Let's take a stand against Muslims. Let's, let's take a stand here against hatred. Let's take a stand here against hatred of all kinds. 
Okay, so uh, later on he said he misspoke. He said, well, you know, I wanted to say uh, not against Muslim, but against Muslim, uh, anti-Muslim bigotry. Okay, but even if you had said that, it's not like the crowd was listening. Uh, they were chanting no ceasefire. Uh, they mean, it means that they wanted more war, more bombings, more death, more destruction. And that is, uh, look, that was a pro-war rally. That wasn't a pro-Israel rally. It was a pro-war rally. That's what the administration is officially backing. While you have people inside of it saying, whoa, this is crazy. I didn't sign up for this. I'm not interested in this. This is our breaking point. Okay. And um, in fact, one of the administration staffers said, look, there is growing dissent across his administration from people close to him. This is his own alum from the campaign, from within his own administration, a complete disregard for that would send a really clear and unwelcoming message. Well, I mean, from what I get right now, yes, any message of just a ceasefire is completely unwelcome. I think the question that I would like to ask, though, is, okay, well then, how, how many more uh, dead kids is it going to take for this administration to change its mind? I, I mean, it's a serious question. How many more, how many more dead children? 